You might find it hard to believe that on the world's largest aircraft carriers where hangar based or jet fighters worth billions of dollars, there was a surprisingly missing detail. No hangar doors. Now, at first, this might seem like a simple design oversight or a cost-saving measure. But could there be more to it? A secret? An innovation? Or perhaps some jokingly suggest a portal to another dimension? Of course, leaving the realm of fantasy aside, this mystery is too intriguing not to explore. How do these floating fortresses protect their precious cargo from the winds of the weather and the threats at sea without the usual protection of hangar doors? The answer lies not just in the design philosophy and the evolutionary history of naval warfare, but also reveals surprising insights about strategy, technology, and the indomitable human spirit pushing the boundaries of the possible. If there's one thing that we can say without any doubt, it's that aircraft carriers are the crown jewels of the US naval fleet. Imagine a runway that can sail anywhere. Carriers are just that. They can easily launch and recover aircraft at sea, allowing them to provide air support anywhere in the world. They have allowed naval forces to project air power great distances without having to depend on local bases for staging aircraft operations. They're often referred to as floating cities at sea, which are essential for power projection, air superiority, and maritime security, playing a pivotal role in modern naval operations. Now, it also goes without saying that aircraft carriers are the marvels of physics, engineering, and advanced technology. An aircraft carrier is a complex and massive naval vessel, but we can broadly break it down into two major compartments, the flight deck and the hangar bay. The flight deck is the most prominent feature of an aircraft carrier, basically where aircraft take off and land. Meanwhile, a hangar deck is the area below the flight deck where the aircraft are stored and maintained when not in use. It takes up more than two-thirds of the length of the entire ship. The hangar deck also has various facilities, such as workshops, fuel stations, and weapons magazines that support aircraft maintenance and readiness. In short, the hangar deck is just like a big garage but for jets. In a typical carrier, a hangar deck can hold more than 60 aircraft. In fact, some carrier hangar decks can have two or three levels. Can you believe that? One might wonder that how these heavy metal flying machines are moved from the flight deck to the hangar, right? Well, it's simple. Elevators. Jets and planes are pushed onto the elevator by trucks, like the ones you might have seen moving around commercial aircraft at the airport. So, now that we've learned a little about the hangar bay, its position on the aircraft carrier, and its role, it's reasonable that you would think that hangar bays must have doors. After all, what is the point of a garage without doors? Well, that's surprisingly not how it works. The one thing that's of the utmost importance is the historical evolution of the design of these vessels. Over the years, the design of US Navy aircraft carriers has evolved significantly. Now, in the early days, aircraft carriers were mostly makeovers of other ships, and hangars were featured as superstructures. British carriers in the early days were designed with safety in mind, and their major focus was on making the hangar bay a protected place that could withstand enemy attacks. That is why they preferred closed hangars that were part of the ship's structure, which made them more resistant to fire and damage. They restricted the hangar space for stowing and servicing aircraft, to protect the aircraft and the crew from external elements and the potential fire risks. Which, however, resulted in limited space, affecting the swift mobility of the aircraft during operations. The US Navy, on the other hand, had a different approach. They incorporated open-sided hangars into their carriers. The hangars were used for more than just storing aircraft. It was also a place for warming up the engines before moving to the flight deck for takeoff. This reflected a more versatile operational philosophy. However, it also made the aircraft and the crew more vulnerable to weather and enemy attacks. An important fact that requires mentioning here is that if a bomb bursts in an open-sided hangar, the damage done would be relatively less than in a closed hangar. But a blast in the hangar is more likely if the hangar has open sides, making this a tricky situation to navigate around. So, the British approach of armored flight decks was picked as an effective form of passive defense from bombs and kamikaze attacks that actually struck their carriers, while the American carriers primarily relied on their armed personnel to prevent themselves from being hit in the first place. This difference in approach stemmed from the original purpose of the carriers 
and influence subsequent design choices. The introduction of open-sided hangars no doubt allowed for rather quicker aircraft deployment and engine warm-up, essential for operational readiness. However, in cold or stormy weather, the advantages of open-sided hangars diminished, leading to a re-evaluation of the design. Additionally, the protection provided by closed hangars against projectiles and fire risks, though initially less apparent, became increasingly significant as naval aircraft and operations evolved. Early versions of the U.S. Navy's carrier's design had a unified ventilation system because of the open-sided hangars, which would transfer smoke and heat from the hangar deck to the lower decks in the event of fire, spreading it over other parts of the carrier. Destruction of the USS Bismarck and the USS Hornet in World War II due to kamikaze attacks underscored the need for effective damage control and firefighting measures. Therefore, division doors were introduced to contain the fire in the area of impact. These 76-foot wide gates separate the hangar deck into three distinct bays. They can be opened and closed from the conflag stations. A conflag station is responsible for monitoring the safety and integrity of the hangar bay and has to be manned at all times if an aircraft is in the hangar bay. This addition has been present on all U.S. aircraft carriers since then. Interestingly, the U.S. Navy has stated that its modern carriers such as the Nimitz class and Ford class can withstand three times the damage sustained by the Essex class inflicted by Japanese air attacks during World War II. The Purpose of Hangar Doors Now, the purpose of hangar doors is more or less the same of that as a garage door, but with more technicalities and challenges. Hangar doors provide a means to keep a climate-controlled workspace in the interior of the hangar to store, inspect, repair, modify, and paint aircraft. Not just that, but they also provide a wall or a barrier that can open and close to allow aircraft, vehicles, equipment, and personnel to enter and exit. Another important function is to serve as a barrier from the elements such as salt water, wind, and sun, which can damage the aircraft's structure and systems. These doors are also meant to prevent the entry of varmints, vermin, and birds. To perform all these functions effectively, hangar doors must have a good sealing quality on all sides of the door, and they absolutely must be durable and easy to open. Depending on the operational needs, the weather conditions, and the security measures of the carrier, the following three types of hangar doors are used by the U.S. Navy on their aircraft carriers today. Bifold doors consist of two or more panels that fold inward or outward when opened or closed. They're usually operated by hydraulic cylinders or pneumatic actuators. Next, hydraulic swinging doors consist of single or multiple panels that swing up or down when opened or closed. They're usually operated by hydraulic cylinders or electric motors. They can provide great headspace or lower initial build height, but they can also act as a huge sail when open. They're also more complex and expensive than other types of doors, as expected. Third, we have the bottom rolling doors that consist of multiple panels that slide horizontally along a track system. They're usually operated by electric motors or hydraulic cylinders and can be opened and closed individually or in groups depending on the operational needs. It's worth noting that bottom rolling hangar doors are the most used by the military because they're suited for very diverse applications. They're also low maintenance when used and maintained properly. In fact, during combat operations, hangar doors play a vital role in protecting the hangar bay, aircraft, and personnel from enemy threats. The doors are often designed to withstand ballistic impacts, blasts, and other forms of external force, providing a shield against enemy fire and projectiles. In adverse conditions though, such as high winds, heavy seas, or extreme temperatures, hangar doors help maintain a stable and controlled environment inside the hangar bay. By closing the doors, carriers can protect aircraft and equipment from being damaged or affected by external weather conditions, ensuring that they remain operational and ready for use. Now let me ask you a question here. How do you think the design of hangar doors could evolve in the future to better meet the needs of modern naval aviation? Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. The Importance of Secured Hangars Hangar doors, no doubt, hold a great importance in keeping the hangar bay secure and act as a shield in cases of enemy attack. Now, as we discussed earlier, traditional carriers prioritized open hangar bays to reduce maintenance costs and streamline aircraft mobility. 
This design choice, however, did cause some damage during enemy encounters. It goes without mentioning the unfortunate fate of the USS Franklin during World War II. The USS Franklin, CV-13, an Essex-class aircraft carrier, suffered extensive damage from enemy air attacks. On March 19, 1945, while operating off the coast of Japan, the ship was hit by two 250-kilogram bombs dropped by a Japanese dive bomber. These bombs penetrated the flight deck and exploded in the hangar deck where dozens of fully fueled and armed aircraft were parked. The explosion on the hangar deck ignited the fuel tanks on the aircraft and a gas vapor explosion devastated the deck. The explosions and the resulting fires caused massive damage and casualties on the ship, killing 724 crew members and injuring 265 more. But as bad as it sounded, the armored hangar deck of the USS Franklin played a crucial role in the ship's survivability. Despite the direct hits and the intense fires, the armored deck contained explosions inside the hangar deck, preventing them from reaching the fuel and ammunition storage areas below, which would have blown the entire ship to bits. However, the armored hangar deck was unfortunately not enough to prevent the loss of the ship. The USS Franklin was missing hangar doors, which were absent on almost every Essex-class carrier. The fire and explosion could have been reduced or extinguished more quickly and effectively with hangar doors, while also allowing the crew to isolate and seal off the damaged sections of the hangar deck, thus preventing the fire from spreading to other areas. Another such incident happened in recent years, which has highlighted the importance of armored hangar decks more than ever. In July of 2020, a fire broke out on the USS Bonhomme Richard while it was docked in San Diego, California. The fire started in the lower storage area and spread rapidly to the upper decks, where the hangar bay and the flight deck were located. The fire burned for four days and injured 63 sailors and civilians before it was put out. The ship was damaged beyond economical repair and was decommissioned and scrapped. The USS Bonhomme Richard was vulnerable to the fire because it lacked an armored hangar deck which was a deliberate design choice of the America-class amphibious assault ships. The America-class ships were designed to carry more aircraft, especially the F-35B Joint Strike Fighter, which required more space and weight capacity. To achieve this, the America-class ships sacrificed the armored hangar deck, which was considered unnecessary and costly. The hangar deck was made of aluminum, which was lighter and cheaper than steel, but also more flammable and less resistant to fire. Challenges of Hangar Doors Now, if the absence of hangar doors can lead to such immense destruction, then why not ensure its integration in each and every U.S. Navy aircraft carrier? What is so bad that can happen if the doors of the hangar bay are closed? Well, as useful and protective as they are, they can cause irreparable damage as well not to just to the aircraft carrier itself, but also to the million-dollar aircraft on board while putting the life of personnel on board at risk. One major drawback of the hangar doors is that they require very high maintenance. They don't work like your normal garage door. These are several-foot-thick heavy metal walls with complex mechanical systems. The moving parts, such as tracks, rollers, and hinges, can wear out over time and may require replacement or repair. Also, they can be affected by strong winds, storms, or waves which can damage the doors or prevent them from opening or closing properly. This complexity adds to the overall maintenance burden of the carrier. Moreover, hangar doors can cause additional stress to unit operations and maintenance by restricting the movement of aircraft or personnel to and from the hangar. The operation of hangar doors poses inherent safety risks to personnel working in the hangar deck area. Accidents can occur if proper procedures aren't followed, such as getting caught in the door mechanism or being struck by a moving door. Another problem with the closed hangar bay is that it increases the costs of the ventilation inside. The enclosed hangars with insufficient ventilation systems can build up the fumes that permeate the bay. The exhaust fans can barely keep up with the fumes from any gasoline spill. These cancerous fumes can prove fatal for the crew working inside, not to mention that the entrapped gases can cause large-scale explosions inside the hangar bay, possibly worse than enemy attacks. Moreover, 
closed hangars actually affect aircraft movement. In other words, the absence of hangar doors can improve the operational efficiency of the carrier. To explain, note that without the need to open and close the doors, aircraft can be quickly moved in and out of the hangar bay, reducing turnaround times between flights. This can be especially advantageous during combat operations or other situations where rapid aircraft deployment is critical. Mitigating the Risks of Hangar Doors The U.S. Navy employs several technologies and procedures to enhance efficiency of hangar doors on aircraft carriers, ensuring the smooth and safe operations of these critical components. First of all, high-strength corrosion-resistant materials are used in the construction of hangar doors, which helps to improve their durability and longevity, reducing the need for frequent maintenance and repair. Today's hangar doors are designed to withstand harsh weather conditions, including high winds, heavy seas, and saltwater exposure. Weatherproof seals and coatings help to protect the doors and maintain a controlled environment inside the hangar deck. On top of that, advanced fire protection systems are installed in the hangar bay, which prevent and suppress fire and explosions on the flight deck and inside the hangar bay. These systems often use a combination of water, foam, and gas agents to suppress fires effectively. And most important of all, proper training of the personnel can make all the difference. For the safe and efficient operation of hangar doors, it's crucial that the crew is aware of the procedures. Therefore, the U.S. Navy conducts regular training exercises and drills to ensure that personnel are familiar with the operation of hangar doors and can respond effectively in emergency situations. At a minimum, two personnel should be required to operate the hangar doors, a panel operator and a safety observer or spotter. Before an operation, an integrity inspection of the door should be performed along the inspection access and door trackways for foreign objects, debris, or any obstructions that may damage or derail the hangar door. What do you think is the most challenging aspect of operating hangar doors on an aircraft carrier? Have you ever considered the engineering behind these massive doors? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Anyway, as you can see, hangar bay doors on aircraft carriers have their pros and cons. On one hand, they offer critical protection and storage capabilities for aircraft, while on the other hand, they come with complexities and vulnerabilities. Over the years, the US Navy has navigated these challenges and found innovative solutions to optimize the use of hangar doors. Through advancements in design, technology, and operational procedures, the force has enhanced the efficiency and protection provided by hangar doors while mitigating the associated risks. By doing so, they have ensured that the hangar bay doors are not a liability, but an asset for the aircraft carrier and its crew when used strategically. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like, and if you loved it, then please subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you'll be showing us your support, which we truly appreciate and cherish. Keep an eye out as we continue to bring more entertaining and educational content on the U.S. Navy and other maritime topics. Hit that bell icon so you receive a notification every time we post a new video. Thanks very much. We'll catch you in the next one.